As far as caste system is concerned, we should look at it in terms of psychophysical nature and functions. Every society across the world has people who teach, who give education, who get absorbed. Psychologically, they, there, are, there is a whole class of people who get absorbed in receiving and transmitting education. And for that, they require a certain ambience which is filled with the mode of goodness. You don't see universities in the midst of hustle bustle of the cities and typical universities have large campuses nestled in the midst of trees and everything. Why? Because that ambience is favorable for education, for getting knowledge. Then there is a class of people across the world who get absorbed in conflict. How can people deny that you know, some of us don't get absorbed in conflict, right? I know people who, if given a choice between eating a chappan bhog and uh, actually getting into a, a court case, would prefer the court case because that's where they get absorbed. Conflict absorbs them. So the class of people which, who get absorbed in conflicts, they are totally driven and agitated when they see injustice. And they just cannot tolerate injustice. And that is known as Kshatrayate Iti Kshatriya. That they have to step in and they have to protect. So they are the Kshatriyas and that class is there across the whole world. So there are people who rule through policies. There are people who rule through administration. There are people who rule through military, through police. So all of these are part of those who are protecting. So therefore, this is the second class. Third is, there are people who get absorbed in acquiring money and protecting money from being spent. So that class is across the world. Gaining prosperity, gaining resources, gaining money drives them, absorbs them. They're completely focused on that. You can't deny that this is common across the world and that's why in the modern paradigm where this third element is given such a priority many many students they go through an identity crisis because society and their families expect them to be in a money acquisition mode but they may be creative they may be artists they may be writers they may be thinkers they may want to do something else because their mind just doesn't get absorbed in acquiring money. Their minds get absorbed in probably getting knowledge or something else. So therefore, you know, this is a class which is existing. And then there is a fourth class of people who get totally absorbed in a situation where they feel a sense of security. They want to preserve that security where with whatever salary they are receiving, their biggest priority is they should not lose the current status quo. They may be engaged in whatever, you know, uh, occupation they may be, which by modern, you know, paradigm may be called as, you know, peanuts. This guy is getting peanuts. Why is he still around? But he is in that mode where his fear is losing that stability and that security. And if he is assured a certain minimum guarantee of requirements in life he is willing to be loyal submissive and serve for long periods of time so this class is also there across the world so therefore let us not look at caste as something which originates only from india or from hindu tradition but let us look at it as something which has been created right at the beginning of creation, one of the biggest challenges HRs face across the world is in corporates there are people with one nature, guna, engaged in another karma or occupation. And when there is mismatch between your nature and your occupation, then it creates all kinds of complexities. And therefore I look at it as a perfectly scientific paradigm which has been very highly, you know, criticized or highly misunderstood by various classes of people because of having portrayed it and branded it in a certain manner over the last few centuries.